a lake, home for a fascinating variety of living things, a web of wildlife. Many lake birds are large and obvious. Mute swans, more graceful than galleons as they sail across the water, washing, preening, putting every feather in its right place. A moorhen who swims with jerky movements, as if powered by clockwork. Tufted duck and great crested grebe. To live a life on water, a bird must be specially fitted out. Many have webbed feet, large paddles to thrust them through the water. One of the problems with water is that it's wet. Feathers must be kept waterproof, and for this purpose, wildfowl have special preen glands near their tails. These produce a waterproof oil, which is spread on the feathers when the birds preen. A lake offers many feeding places. Tufted ducks dive in search of a snack, but Canada geese stretch out their long necks to pick up food. Mallard upend, dabbling in mud and weed. The brightly coloured drake, and the much drabber duck, well camouflaged for sitting on the nest. All this upending and dabbling stirs up food, leaves, seeds, insects, snails, even small frogs. But weed is the favourite food of a moorhen. Plants aren't just food, however. When they stick out of the water, they make good hiding places for birds. And they're the ideal place for reed warblers to build their cup-shaped nest carefully fastened to several reed stems. The leaves of the water lily, as tough as leather, you might think. But a water bowl thinks they're quite delicious. Pond snails, at home both below and above the water, eat leaves too. A drake shoveler has his own way of feeding. He uses a network of bristles at the side of the bill to sieve tiny plants and animals from the water. A coot pecking at weeds on the surface. Beside the lake, the grass grows green and lush in the damp water meadows where cattle graze, turning the grass into milk for our daily pinters. But cows aren't the only grass eaters. Mute swans are very efficient lawnmowers, snipping off the grass stems with their broad, flattened beaks. Such large birds can feed undisturbed, with little fear of attack from predators. But this tiny pond skater is easier prey. Below, a water boatman has caught a caddis larva. Meanwhile, Back on the branch, a hungry kingfisher waits for the right moment to plunge after an unsuspecting fish. A stickleback, quietly chasing water fleas, but not for much longer. Got it. The wriggling, slippery fish must be dealt with before it can be swallowed. And there are several other fishing birds. A grey heron wades on long legs in the shallows, cautious, watching for every telltale movement. Great crested greaves also pursue fish, but they do so in deeper water. This one seems to have caught more than he bargained for. The heron has been successful as well. And the fish is swallowed head first. But this is a rare sight. 
A water rail seldom ventures into the open. Seeing a fish move, he slinks from the reed bed thicket on long, slender toes. Grabs a small fish and retreats again. In spring and summer, the wildlife of the lake breeds. A dragonfly lays its eggs in the water. In August, the eggs hatch, becoming nymphs. Next spring, the nymph leaves its watery home. It climbs, the skin splits, and the fully winged adult emerges. The old skin is cast off like a dirty sock. Its wings expand and dry in the morning sun. Damselflies emerge, metallic red, green, and blue. The lakeside plants are in bloom, a riot of colour. Yellow water lilies, and yellow flag iris. Marsh violet. Golden king cups. Shocking pink of ragged robin. These brightly coloured flowers with their stores of nectar attract many insects. And insects are an important source of food for many birds. A yellow wagtail skips across the lily pads in search of a meal. A reed warbler collects beakfuls of insects for an ever hungry brood. Reed warblers are summer visitors to the lake, cashing in on the seasonal glut of food. In autumn, they migrate to spend the winter in East Africa. In the lake, toads are busy mating. The male is much smaller than the female and he clings to her back as she lays long strings of spawn. Each egg is protected by a coating of slippery jelly. Frogs are spawning too. But frog spawn is a large floating mass of jelly. The eggs develop into tadpoles in the sun's warmth. Tadpoles grow quickly in the shallow water at the edge of the lake. As they grow, they develop tiny legs and their tails become shorter. Soon, there'll be miniature frogs or toads. A hungry grass snake on the lookout for an easy meal. A tiny toad, perhaps? He'd prefer something larger. A nice fat duckling, that's more like it. The parent duck, ever alert, senses that danger is near. But where? She sounds the alarm and leads her brood to the safety of cover. The defeated grass snake must try its luck elsewhere. Almost as if they can't believe their eyes, great crested grebes shake their heads. All this head shaking is just a part of their extraordinary courtship display that's carried on all through the breeding season. Canada geese have a rather different display, stretching their long necks and honking loudly. And here's a mutual bathing display. Another piece of courtship. Nests are made and eggs laid. A coot carefully turns her eggs to ensure that each is evenly warmed. And so does the female swan before she settles down to incubate her eggs.
Grebes build a nest platform with a sloping edge. Water drains from the bird's waterproof feathers. In the 19th century, many grebes were shot for this thick layer of feathers. Called grebe fur, it made the ideal lining for ladies' muffs, warm and snug. Grebes became rare. Today, thankfully, they're protected and are plentiful again. When the grebe left its nest, it hid the eggs under a layer of weed, which must be removed before she settles down again. Now her eggs have hatched. A proud moorhen is kept busy tidying up the nest and brooding the chicks to keep them warm. Mallard ducklings are not fed at all by their parents. All the ducklings hatched at about the same time. Now they're ready to leave the nest and instinctively follow their mother as she leads them to the lake. The Canada goslings are already there, floating on the water like yellow powder puffs. They too find all their own food as the parent geese stand guard. Coot chicks, on the other hand, must rely on the parents for their food. The fluffy red and orange heads stimulate the parent coots into a frenzy of activity to satisfy their ever hungry offspring. Now where's she gone? Down to the underwater supermarket for a beakful of weed. Up she pops. Instant lunch. Served by a waitress in a smart black dress, complete with snow white cap. Each parent coot feeds several chicks. It'll be 30 days or more before they can fend for themselves. And they don't grow a white head cap like their parents until the autumn comes. After lunch, a good preen is needed, and the old nest platform is a convenient place. To make it easier for the young to climb out, the parents have built a gentle ramp from the water. But when you're so very young, balancing is very tricky. And that goes for this moorhen, pretending it's a lumberjack. Now the swan's eggs have hatched. The great thing about having a swan for a mum is that she's the ideal feather bed. Dry, warm, comfortable. And a super place for a game of hide and seek. These cygnets are so young you can still see the egg tooth, that pale point on the beak. It was used as a chisel to break out of the egg. But afternoon rest is nearly over. Down on the lake, Dad is getting rather impatient. The cygnets seem reluctant to leave their nice warm bed, but Mum leads them to the water nevertheless. It's time for tea. Slowly, the sun sinks towards the horizon as dusk approaches and a ghostly vision haunts the water meadows. A barn owl, silently quartering the fields, searching for its breakfast, just as others are finishing supper and preparing for bed.
Perhaps it will pounce on an unsuspecting water vole or a small bird. All the wildlife here is a part of the great food web, a carefully balanced world of living things, of predators and their prey, each adapted to live in this watery world of the lake. <laughs>